Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to my new series. It's called Obsessed with Improv with Cypher Sounds. That's me, Cypher Sounds. This guy is Nate Dern. Hello. You probably already know who he is because probably anybody <laughs> no anybody watching oh, okay. knows who you are. So explain to the people who already know who you are who you are. So, as you already know, my name is Nate Dern. Mm. I'm here because I'm the artistic director of the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York City. It's a comedy theater primarily known for improv and sketch comedy. Mm -hmm. And so in my role as artistic director, I'm in charge of setting our schedule, so choosing which shows run at the theater. We got two theaters in New York City, one in Chelsea, one in the East Village. And then I also run all of our auditions for like the house improv teams, the house sketch teams, the house video sketch teams. Right. Now, the reason why I wanted you on this uh, show, sure, sure, show, uh, because you did a movie. I did. About improv. That's, the director's chairs are appropriate. Yeah, that. that's, why, that's why I picked them. Oh, nice. I thought it would be good, right? That's great. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second because I saw a rough cut of it. I guess it was a rough cut. Uh, loved it. So, Thanks. first of all, um, you've been the artistic director for how long? Like a year? Not that long. Yeah, just a year and a half. So about July 2011, I started. So yeah, now, how did you get the half. job? So I had been. I started taking improv classes in 2007, and then I got on a sketch team like in 2008, and a Harold team about that same time. Uh, Harold, like an improv team. Everybody knows that. Who's yeah, they know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was just kind of around the community. And then the person who had the job before, Anthony King, mm -hmm. he'd had the job for a long time, like over six years. And he announced that he was moving to Los Angeles because right. he had gotten a jo uh, staff writing job on a TV show. Oh. Um, and so it was kind of opened up to the community, like submit if you're interested. So I said, Really? Yeah. So you weren't even like his underling or his intern or no, anything? yeah. Wow. Yeah, so... Um, oh, I thought he was, like, molding you for the position. No, yeah. So they, it's interesting. Like In the 15 or so years that the UCB uh, theater has existed, like each time there's been a new artistic director, it's kind of happened a different way. Wow. Like, when Anthony was chosen, he was, like, picked right. um, by his, his predecessor, Owen Burke. And then it was kind of... It was known for months, but they didn't announce it. Uh -huh. and so it was, he was, like, secretly training him, and then it was revealed. Oh, oh Anthony King knew. Yeah, but, but he, he didn't, couldn't tell anybody because right, yeah, right, right. they were like getting things in place. Right. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so you submitted. But this one, yeah, it was just like an open submission. And I think, uh, I don't know how many people submitted in total, but they had, they brought people in for interviews. And then they had like a second round wow. of interviews. And then with uh, Anthony King and with Alex Sidtis, who's the managing director. Right. Who used to, I, who I used to work with in oh, the tunnel yeah. back in the days. Oh, he used to work for Peter Gation. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so um, oh, cool. so when I see him, I'm like, wow, this is yeah. a complete 360 of That's my fine. life. <laughs> um, so, so you submitted, you interviewed, and you, I mean, but they had to know you were some kind of like nerd to be able to do what you do. Yeah, I think so. I think they could tell I was a nerd. Most people can. Like, were you quickly. around a lot, like the theater a lot, or did you work for the theater or the school or anything? Yeah, I was around a lot. So I was like, I had taken a million classes. I was, I'd been an intern. Um, I was on, you know, a, a house sketch team and a house improv team. So I had experience in both of those. I'd put up Spanx, which is like a sh auditioning yeah. a show for a run. I directed uh, UCB comedy videos. So like, kind of all the different things that the theater wow. does, I'd had a little bit of experience in. Right. And wasn't, in, I wasn't like the best in any of those. Like I didn't have like the most famous run or I wasn't the best on Harold Knight or anything like that. But I think because I had ex a little bit of experience in like all, all the different things yeah. that the theater did, I, I'm i surmising that that's right. maybe and why. And obviously you, you gotta work hard, I guess. Yeah. So my whole life with improv is fairly new, and obviously I'm obsessed with it now. Very exciting. Like it has taken over my life. <laughs> um, and you pick the Harold teams. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have or the final say, but then I also, I'll invite like a panel of other uh, veteran teachers and performers at the theater to watch the auditions, and I get all of their input. Um, but then at the end of the day, I yeah, I have final, the final say. say. Um, because like I used to listen to the the podcast that Will Hines and John Fashante do. Cool, and, and you helped bring it back. Yeah, that's, that's uh, other news. 
So I would always hear everyone talk about Anthony King. Anthony yeah. King does this. Anthony. King. So I was like, I gotta get to know this guy. Uh, yeah. I gotta study him. Mm-hmm. Figure out where he lives. Find his moves. And I'm gonna <laughs> harass him <laughs> to get on a team. And then they're like, do Anthony that. King's leaving. Uh, so I was like, Who the fuck is Nate Dern? <laughs> now I gotta start from scratch. Oh, I gotta harass this new guy. So you were on Sandino, right? I was. I think I saw you like the last couple shows. When did you leave? Uh, so I was on, yeah, I was on the Herald team Sandino. And then after, after I was AD, I was still doing that. And I felt kind of strange about, cause I'm supposed to like judge Herald night and like right. rank the teams yeah. um, and make cuts and stuff. And it felt strange Being to, on it. yeah, to like be judging the thing that I was also a part of. So oh, I decided love, to step You love down. being on it, right? Oh yeah. I really, I, mi- I missed it and I still miss it. Yeah. It was like when I left Sandino, when I would go to Herald Night, it felt a little bit, and I saw the other people performing with them, it felt a little bit like seeing an ex-girlfriend, like with a new guy. So, <laughs> wow, I'm glad that you're happy, I guess. <laughs> like you're doing really well for yourself. But, Fuck you, Dom. Right, exactly. <laughs> so why did Sandino break, why did you break it up or whatever Ooh. you call it? So If you don't want to answer, you no, can yeah, go totally. fuck myself. No, you can okay. ask any questions. So um, we create these... I, th- I think of Herald Night and Mod Night, so the house uh, improv teams and the house sketch teams on Monday and Tuesday nights, respectively, kind of as, like, training grounds. Okay. And so it's never meant to be a permanent thing. It's like right. a tour in the improv trenches. And so mm-hmm. even when a team is, is great and doing very well, like Sandino, I think after a certain amount of time, there, there's, like, two big reasons. One was that I wanted to spread the wealth around Herald Night. Like, I wanted to make the whole night better. Mm-hmm. So put some of that talent on other teams. Right, because they've been there so long. Yeah. The talent, they're so like, veterans, yeah, almost. Yeah, exactly. Um, at, yeah, at the time, kind of the more veteran people. Um, it's, like, it's younger relatively now, uh, the night. And then the second reason was also to help try to help make the people on Sandino better by having them play with new people. Because mm-hmm. when you're on the same team for a long time, you kind of fall into roles. So it's like, all right, on this team... I'm the playmaker on this team. I'm the big crazy right. guy. And then you kind of, some of your other improv muscles atrophy because you don't have to do different yeah. things. So I wanted yeah. to like push them as individuals and also make the whole night better. Uh, I think you toilet paper Jack's girlfriend's house. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, um, well, well, but also something that could happen that, that I've seen, yeah. which I'm new, right. uh, become weekend teams. That's which right. Which everybody thought Sandino was like, because I saw the last couple of nights and as far as like the form mm-hmm. of Harold, which which is the three beats group game, three beats, whatever, they almost weren't doing that. They were doing like some crazy different style. Right. So I was like, oh, maybe they're not doing Harold's enough for Harold night. No, I actually, you know, I did. I told them. I th- so I give I give notes to the teams, and I think towards the end, one of the time I gave them a note. There was something like, I think it was a short email that said like, "Good show." Make sure you play game. Make sure you do Herald. Yeah. Like end of email. Right. So for, like for that night. Yeah, kind of responding to that because they were they were trying to like break the form a little right. bit. But I don't mind that. Like uh, Del Close said that you know that the Herald is like training wheels. Like it's it's a uh, a beginning, but then you know take off the training wheels and like break out of right, that form. Right, right, so right. I don't I don't mind that when people. No, it was. I mean, it, but I mean, because when I go to Herald night, I go there with. I used to go with a notebook, but I stopped That's doing awesome. that because I looked insane. That's okay. I used to do that too. <laughs> but now I go to like learn the Herald, which is like I guess like the first step. Mm-hmm. And um, but then I get so caught up in a great show, I don't even realize if they're doing the beats right. or they, you know, it's like this is hilarious. Right. I think that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. definitely, definitely. If I get to write all my notes, that means it was right too structured and maybe not funny enough where I lost yeah, track. Totally. Oh, and Sandino, you could tell me to go fuck myself if I'm saying anything wrong. <laughs> so now, how do you deal with... Now, this is the hip-hop brain in me, where I started off as an intern here at Hot 97, cool. and I studied, like, Puff Daddy and Jay-Z and all these guys. How do you deal with being... Like, you're the gatekeeper for a lot of these people's dreams, including mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you make the decision, so do do you find people, like, sucking up to you or... Yeah, you know, like, good question. Good question. I think people who knew me, definitely people who I knew and had a relationship with before I was artistic director. I I don't think I noticed any change. Yeah. Um. I it, I I'm I'm a very like a lot of comedians are, uh, like self doubting, insecure people, yeah. and so like yeah, I am. If someone Thanks. like talks to me at a 
bar or comes up and is like nice to me i'm like, there is like part of my brain's like would you be being nice to me if i wasn't the artistic right. director so i'm i think that's like my own neuroses uh, yeah. Showing themselves, but no, I haven't. I haven't noticed anything like. Or maybe, but maybe yeah. not directly to you. But do you hear like they turn, they turn? It's they turn. No, I don't think. So. Yeah, it's funny because, like you said, I I certainly felt like when I was on Herald Night and Anthony King would show up to, or when he would be there to, um, like to judge or watch the night, yeah. it would like it would spread like that. People would be like, Anthony's here tonight, right. and then you'd be backstage, and then someone would like run like Anthony's here tonight. Yeah, you'd be like, oh no, all right, <laughs> better do like not as if you weren't gonna try to do right. your best anyway. But now it's like, okay, step up, guys. Well, I know because I do a lot of indie shows, uh -huh. so there's like. Sometimes the audience is almost non-existent. Yeah. And you don't put your all, or I think. It's I, a different the crowd type, helps uh, me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's with improv. That's how it works. Yeah. yeah. So when there's a bigger crowd, I feel myself doing better. Yeah. So when, like, so then I told this to, um, I think, Anthony Atamanik, uh, 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 uh Neil, Neil Casey was at the jam last night. Very cool. And... He has this laugh that validates uh, your move. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so last night I got a Neil laugh, and I was like, <laughs> "Good feeling. That's a good feeling." <laughs> but like, I, he was on stage. Uh, no, he wasn't on stage with me. He was off that that set, and I heard the Neil laugh. I was Ooh, like, "Yeah." That feels good. Yeah, that's a uh, good. So feeling. I'm sure when you're there, because I saw you at Harold Night the other night, mm -hmm. and you're watching, and then like I saw you laugh, and I was like, if they see him laughing, <laughs> they must feel good because. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder. I don't know. Uh, not even maybe not even putting people on teams. You can take people off. Yeah, that's part. Of, it's like yeah. How does that feel? Cuts, it doesn't feel good. That's pro. That is the worst part of the job. Has to is be. making cuts from. Yeah, from the house teams. Uh, saying no to spanks or saying no to people who pitch a show that also is bad. Yeah. Um, because there's just like a finite amount of slots like i can't yeah, not everybody can get slots so just how time. it works yeah so that all stinks but definitely the worst is yeah is making cuts yeah yeah it's but it, it, ha it, they, it has to happen for new people to get a shot it just yeah. has to change has to happen i i auditioned for harold knight you uh, just auditioned one time i don't know what is it what does it matter i'm just curious no i auditioned three times cool well because it you know it takes it takes a while Okay, one time. All right. Fine. Because <laughs> I don't know. Now you're like, okay, he just did once. Fuck him. Uh, <laughs> I auditioned. And, well, let me tell you two things that changed my life in the last year. Okay. Improv and therapy. Cool. For some reason, I entered those things at the same time. Mm. And I feel like a new man. That's cool. It's really weird. And it's yeah. like one of my problems in therapy that I learned is my therapist told me, oh, sometimes you have trouble initiating. I was like, that what? Yes. Wow. She, she said that. I was like, what? Because like I'm, she, she's like, you're so successful. You're so ambitious. What's the problem with this and this? And I'm like, it's that first move. Oh. I don't know how to look, make eye contact, and shake that guy's hand. Yeah. Like I, where you would look like this confident person, uh, which I'm way better at now. And then also in class, I would get notes. You never initiate. That's really interesting. Support, knock it out of the park. Hmm. When I see something happening, I can, uh, everything on it. But that first move, I get nervous. Mm -hmm. or I used to. Mm -hmm. I gotta be careful what I tell you because you're watching. <laughs> me. <laughs> no, you can say anything. Um, so yeah, so it it changed my life. Um, so I auditioned for the ha last Harold night. I think it was like April or something. Like yeah, that. that was the last open one. Yeah. And I walk in. I signed up randomly, not with anyone I knew. Which now I realize I should have signed up with people I know. Different strategies. I just, just, it was just a comfort thing, I think. Uh -huh. But I was just, I was challenging myself. Mm -hmm. You, John Fashanti, who's my 101 teacher. Nice. Brandon Gardner, who's my 201, and some other class I took with him, and in advance. Awesome. Josh Patton from Grandma's Ashes, who always sees me at the gym. Fantastic. I was like, ah, I got this. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like no one I knew. I was like, ah, I got this. I go in audition. And I thought I, I thought I did really well. Now looking back, I realized I didn't do too well. But at the time, mm -hmm. I impressed myself. Uh, what do what are you looking for when these when there's these people that come in audition? Because obviously there's a lot of people you know, mm -hmm. 
um, people that already maybe used to be on that are coming trying to come back around. For new people, new students like myself, what yeah. are you looking for? So we have about uh, over 400 people will come in for the first round audition. And then we try to narrow that down to eight teams of eight for the second round. So eight teams of eight. So, and they're going to do a herald in the right. second round. So 64 people. So from 400, we have to narrow that down to 64. Damn, so I envy that. Yeah, so it's, it's tough. Uh, less than one in four get called back. Um, and so the, we're looking for people who uh, support, support, e support their scene <laughs> partner's ideas. Yeah, you got that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Like the biggest way that you could guarantee that you don't get a call back is to like, like initiate an idea and then your scene partner like, is doing something else and then you ignore what they said and go back to your idea. Right. That's probably the surest way to not get called back. So people who, like we're really impressed people who can make the adjustment and yeah. support their scene partner's idea. Uh, and then just like saying yes, uh, can you play game? Are you funny? Can we hear you? you can, Do you seem confident? Right. Um, you can see all that in, the, in those one minute, two minute scenes? No, but we're looking for hints of that. Mm. You, it's very hard. And so what we do in the room, we, uh, as we're talking, we're kind of, we're thinking about um, like definite yeses, maybes, and then noes. And so it's just like a gut reaction and it's very little information and we do the best we can, but it's definitely not a perfect Is process. it like, like me knowing all three people except you, would that have helped me? Like, because would they bring up something like, oh, yeah. he's good in class. So this, this is, uh, uh, so in like, in statistics, there's the normal distribution, like the bell curve. Mm -hmm. So there's like, you know, 10% are excellent, 10% are very bad. And then there's this middle 80% that are right. like, okay. That, and with Harold Knight, it seemed, or with the auditions, it seems to be about like that. that most, most people are like pretty good. Every Harold audition, I'm like, this is great. This community right. is pretty deep with talent. Yeah. So a few people are just excellent. Like they hit it out of the park. We're like, great, definitely right. invited back. We spend the, m the bulk of our time talking about the people who are like pretty good. Right. And so it would never, someone knowing you outside of the audition would never hurt you. So it would never be like, oh, they had a great audition. Well, they're not good. So let's not bring yeah, it back. Yeah, that would yeah. never happen. If you have a great audition, you're getting called back. Right. But when we're in that, the mass of people in the middle who are pretty good, then that information does come into play. So if right. you have, if someone in the, on the panel has seen you outside, like we would bring that information in. Um, at UCB, one of the great things with our classes is that teachers take notes and we have like a database where oh, we have- Oh, really? Yeah, so we have notes on every class you've Good ever to taken. know. Yeah, and so we will like consult those notes and see what your past teachers have said. So we'll use that for like a tiebreaker. So for like these two people- Really? Yeah, they had like, both had pretty good auditions, mm. but you know, these 10 teachers say this person's amazing. Whereas this wow. person, they just have like okay notes, yeah. so we'll we'll choose that person. Jeez. That's when it's a tie, though. The audition trumps everything. Right. If you have a great audition, I, I I'm not trying to put everything. you on the spot, man. Yeah. I'm just like really curious on how it works and what people yeah. should work on. And that's and it's also it's like a changing process. Like every time I've done the audition, I've tried to improve how I do it and change it a little yeah. bit because it's not a perfect system, and I'm trying to make it better. That's one of the reasons with so Lloyd Knight now is basically. It's That's like what I was trying for. Yeah. I would have never tried to be on a Harold team yeah. at that time. I was like, but these new Lloyd teams, yeah. it's like minor leagues. Exactly. And kind of Lloyd, one of the big reasons of Lloyd teams is try to improve on the Harold audition process. So yeah. rather than just seeing someone for one and a half minutes, now I get to see them. That's cool. How do you do a Harold multiple shows over the course of weeks? And I think that's better evidence for how you'll do on Harold. Do you watch a lot of them? Yeah. You go there and watch? Try to, yeah. And if you don't, you have somebody or I get everybody kind of chips in with notes and stuff, right? Like yeah, every every Wednesday I'll send an email to teachers, uh, improv teachers, saying send me feedback and scores on wow. any uh, Harold you saw and any Lloyd you see tonight. So if they just happen to be there or at the theater or whatever. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'll get some feedback from that. And then I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of all the team scores and notes. And really? It's like that? Oh, mm -hmm. so you are geeked out. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely. And that uh, and uh, Anthony King, my predecessor, did that too. So I like follow. I have a different spreadsheet system than he had, but yeah. like I took, I implemented his system. He did. So you can always thing. go back and reference mm -hmm. how good a team is. Yeah. And, wow. I. I shed a tear. 
when I looked at the list of the Herald editions and didn't make, and wasn't on the list. Back list. Yeah, I just we, wanted to call care back. about it. Yeah, I was at a restaurant with my oh, lady. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I looked at the list oh. and I had to go to the bathroom. Oh no! It was Thanks. fuck. And oh. I and I every Thanks time I go, heart. that restaurant's right by my oh, house. You can't go there anymore. When I went there, you? I went to the bathroom. Wow. I was like, "This bathroom hurts." That sucks. <laughs> it breaks my heart. It's oh. uh, so I didn't get when I first submitted to be an actor on a mod team. I didn't even get an audition. Yeah. So you have to submit a headshot right, resume, right, right, yeah. and I didn't even get called in for an audition. So it's similar. Like, oh man, am I yeah. fooling myself? I thought I yeah. thought I was good at this, but I'm not even getting an audition. It hurts. So I, I think everyone's felt that. Even like th some of the names, like uh, people who now are teachers and on teams that perform every week at UCB they've been cut from teams they didn't make audition. yeah you know, it's like everyone has these stories that's why I feel like it's okay it is but okay. at the time and this is like April so like yeah. eight months ago something like that uh I wasn't as far along in my therapy I wasn't yeah. as good as I I think I am now in improv I didn't have a team so now I feel much better good. and I was like what the fuck were right. you doing what was wrong with right. me but but at the, that day yeah bam, right ooh. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it sucks, man. One thing, though, that I also I always try to tell people, though, is that just statistically speaking, the majority of people will never get on a Herald team, right? Wow. Like thousands and thousands of people take classes every year, like over 8,000. The vast majority will never get on a Herald team. So I always tell people your goal should be to, like, form your own team, your own comedy group of like-minded individuals, and then do something great. And then if by chance you get on a Herald team, great, but you shouldn't like plan on it or you shouldn't, it shouldn't be your only goal. Right. I agree. And so, and if you're doing that other thing, like, um, then if that other thing gets like a name for itself, then I'll, I or whoever is the gatekeeper will want, will want you to be on right. Herald night. So like right. with, um, or, yeah, like with, uh, uh, with like I always tell people that our our models should be like like the UCB four didn't wait around in Chicago. These are the founders of the UCB theater. They didn't wait around in Chicago to be put onto a team. They moved to New York, formed their own sketch group, put up shows, and pitched it to Comedy Central. Right. Uh, and then people like like Derek Comedy, uh, like Donald, never got on a Herald yeah. team. And he's, you know, he's yeah, yeah, one amazing. of our most successful. Yeah. And now we're like, he's a used to be alumni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Back. And he was, because, you know, he performed here. But he didn't get onto a Herald team. And there's other examples of that, too. So the the best thing to do is, like, form your own comedy group with people who have a similar sensibility. So, like, Derek, like, Broad City. Uh, I don't know them. That's uh, Abby Jacobson and Alana Glazer. They, mm. they're I know their names. I've seen them on Facebook. I don't know who they are. Yeah, so they, they form Sorry. their own. They formed their own uh, web series and then uh, got some attention online, and now they're making it into a pilot. And so, oh, good! Like it's and it's just because they were like, "This is what we think's funny," and they. I hear you, and everybody who cares hears you. But it's something it's also, about that Tuesday I agree, night, I agree. man. And it's also it's easier it's it's easy for me to say on the other side. Yeah. And when I was when I I, rem I remember having a conversation when I was in like one hundred and one in a bar. With someone, I was at Trailer Park. It's a bar on yeah, the twenty third. Yeah. There used to be a Krispy Kreme right next to it. It's gone oh, now. Oh, bummer! I love Krispy Kreme. And so, and I, I remember saying to them, I, I was like being really dramatic, and I was like t drinking my beer, and I was like, I'm gonna be on a Herald team within one year. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, they were telling me the advice, like, Well, no, you shouldn't worry about. It. I was like, I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Like, you know. I know so I, I was there too. I was it's that intense. Yeah, I made it. I, that, I'm like, okay now. Goal. But that day, yeah, it's hard. Um, yeah, but I, I hear you. And that's what a lot of people do, but it's just something about that night. Maybe we should do like a we should do like another theater. I'll open up a third. Yeah, theater. do like Harold Lloyd and what would the next one be? What would we, what would we call it? Would it? be the minor minor leagues. I've, I've what would be the little league? The little league. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like the Lloyd teams now? Great. Lloyd night is. I feel good about. It. I Lloyd like night Wednesday good, nights man. at UCB East. I think are great. Wednesday nights. night. Oh, I missed two man good movie vibe. though. Two Man yeah. Movie was the shit. Yeah, very Two good. Two Man Movie was the shit. Love Two Man Movie. I like Brothers Hines. Brothers Hines is crazy, of course, yeah. but... Yeah, it was a good uh, show. The movie doesn't get done much. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a full movie either, like with like eight people. I've only ever seen Two Man Movie. And I'm like, if these guys could do it with just two of them, imagine a, yeah. a full cast. It must be amazing. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I, th I think smaller cast improv is better. I like it better for the most part. Because you can have a bigger... 
control of what happens in the show. Yeah. I think sometimes people see like two or three person improv and they're like, wow, that's more imp- like a, that's yeah. when a two or three person improv team beats an eight person team on cage match. It's like, wow, they, yeah. they beat them with only two or three. But yeah. I actually think that's easier. And it's, it's what I would prefer to do. Really? I think it's easier to shape the show. It's like fewer people you have yeah, to get yeah, on the yeah. same page. With, yeah, you know? that's true. I like, um, you know who Greasy Lake? Yeah. They're good. They're very good. That's like my new favorite indie team. Oh, awesome. Greasy Lake is my favorite indie team. I try to go to all their shows. Nice. They um they do they do. What do you like about right? Greasy Lake? Um they I mean, there's not even a second of doubt when it comes to support or like you were saying, like if someone makes a choice, like the other two guys are on it. You know what I mean? Like instantly, like he goes, Yeah, he's an eagle and then uh Purcell, is that his name? Is that his name? He jumped on a chair and was a bird. Like, you know, with me, I take a second to think about <laughs> it, and I go, oh, I should be a bird. Yeah. He was, boom, Instant. on it. Yeah, that's great. And um, did they, I saw them at cage match, I think, the first time. And uh, they did, like, they were incredible. Awesome. Yeah, that's incredible. Great. Oh, you know what I forgot to ask you? This is supposed to be the first question I oh. asked you. Why am I so obsessed with improv? Maybe one of the reasons maybe why you're so obsessed with improv is that it's like uh, it's approved time for adults to do like make believe and pretend and to uh, like kind of get outside of yourself and to say things you'd never be able to say mm. in normal life and like be silly and fun and it's like approved. It's OK. Right. Um, there's like no judgments and it's pretty rare to find that in adult life. Yeah, um, I think real. one of the reasons why I like it is I'm the type of person who I'm always thinking of a thousand things and I'm always like, I got this project I'm working on. I should be doing this. I'm always, I'm like yeah. thinking of a thousand things, but when I do improv, when it's good, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm like mm. in the moment doing improv. I used to be a, uh, a distance runner. Like I did that in high school and oh, college. Really? I was on the team. And when that was at its best, it was the same feeling. It was uh, like singular focus. I'm not thinking about anything else but this race. So it's almost like meditation. Yeah, it is. And it's because in it's like w- right these days, it's like the only thing I do that does feel like meditation like that. It just mm. feels that singular uh, attention, which is really amazing. With improv, there's all these things going on. Rules. Yeah, I don't think about any of that when I'm doing improv. I do how I is it because you've been doing it for a while? No, I don't think so. I've I've always uh, how I how I've practiced and how I when I teach and coach, what I say is, in practice, you do think about the rules and you think about all right. Today, I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna love every idea that is said. Mm-hmm. Or like today, I'm gonna work on initiating because I'm not very good at initiating. So I'm gonna initiate every scene I'm in today. So in practice, I think you can think. But then when it comes for the show, I don't think at all. I don't think about game. I don't think about rules. I just react. I'm just like in the moment reacting. <laughs> I'm just like doing my gut. And then after the show, I'll think about it. Like, was that funny? What was I doing there? And then based on what I think about after the show, I'll go take that to my next practice and like right. work on that. But in the show, I, I'm just reacting. Reacting is my number one thing I'm working on right now, mm-hmm. which I'm working a lot with Abra. She's a, that she's a great person to work with, for that, especially for that, because mm-hmm. her reacted. So I'm taking a 412 with her. Oh, great! And I did a scene yesterday, and she side coached it a little mm-hmm. with me and this girl, and it turned out to be one of the best scenes oh, ever. Awesome, that's great. You know, and it was yeah. just like literally what she was saying. Just what did she just say? Now say to that. Yeah. And then now that girl has to say to what I said, mm-hmm. and I was like, it's that easy? Yeah. But why is it so hard? We make right. it so difficult we do yeah but it is, i think it is that easy. i get stressed out sometimes man yeah I, I do too i still do like I, i'll have a bad show and i'm like oh, I'm, I'm bad at improv i'm a fraud like i shouldn't have this job like i still f- feel like that sometimes oh good so. that makes me feel better <laughs> that makes me feel a lot better yeah um okay so that's why i'm obsessed or one of the reasons maybe why the good. movie i went to see movie. the movie thank you um thanks for seeing it it was it was really good man now, well, okay, explain the movie. So I'm, uh, I made a documentary film, a feature-length documentary film called On the Cusp, Off the Cuff. It's about improv comedy in New York City. There are no real rules to improvising. What there is is a code of honor, and what it revolves around at a high level is I'd always rather look like an idiot than have anyone else on stage look like an idiot. Yeah. 
and tell your stepson that it's time to get the fuck out of the house. I started filming it, gosh, like three years ago now, when I uh, just, I wanted to make it, I knew I wanted to make a documentary, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in grad school for uh, sociology. Now? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. Jeez. At, uh, at Columbia. Busy. And so I wanted, I knew I wanted to make a documentary, and I also, I was spending so much time at, <laughs> at UCB anyway, I was like, might as well uh, make a documentary about this thing yeah. that I'm obsessed with. Yeah. And I wanted to understand it better. And I also, um, like my mom, I'm from Colorado, and uh, I used to do stand-up, and my mom came to s visit me one time, and she saw me do stand-up in Times Square. And so now whenever... She shook her head, was like, no, it's not for you. No, she <laughs> liked it, but whatever, she loves it. She's very supportive. <laughs> but whenever I'm like back in Colorado, she would say like, oh, Nathan does, even after I started doing improv and stopped doing stand-up, she'd say, uh, Nathan does stand-up in Times Square. And so I wanted to make a movie Ugh. where I could show my mom, like, this is what improv is. It's different than stand-up. Because when you tell someone outside of our world, like, oh, I'm an improv comedian, they're like, oh, tell a joke. And you're like, no, that's, yeah. that's stand-up. I do, they, like, don't understand the difference. And so I wanted to make a movie to explain what long-form improv comedy is. Um, I don't think I accomplished that. <laughs> that. But that's why I set out. I think I did, I think I did a good job showing that there's a community of people yeah. who care about long form improv yeah. a whole lot. I think I showed that. But I think at the end of this movie, if you didn't know what long form was, you probably still wouldn't know. Um, cause I, I, ma I took an NYU, a year long NYU uh, documentary production course, and I would screen ex uh, clips along the way, like as, as I was working on it. And originally I had like a 15 minute unbroken clip of people doing, of Ruru doing a long form show. I taped, um, like a dozen, or I taped like a dozen shows of like stepfathers, uh, Death by Ruru, so great improv teams. And I found like the funniest 15 minute clip I could find. And when I showed it to this group of non improvisers, they're like, this is boring because Shit. improv doesn't transfer very well. I hate when people tape. say that. I hate right. it. Is and that so really, is that true? That's what they say. Yeah. It doesn't transfer. It just, because part of like what we were saying before, when you do a show, in front of a live or in, in front of a smaller crowd, it's not yeah, as good, it's and and it's like, yeah. why is that? It's because uh, an improv show is a collaboration between the audience and the people yeah. on stage. Like you're you're doing your thing. I guess thing. you're like even the audience is kind of in group mind. They are absolutely because when they laugh at something, they're telling you that's what's funny, and you're like, okay, we'll do that again, audience. Yeah. They're like your little uh, your Geiger counter or your metal detector, yeah. like on the beach trying to find what's funny, um, and so it they're a part of it, and so when you're watching it taped it d it severs that connection mm. um and so you can still like appreciate comedic ideas but it's not it's not the same thing mm. and so watching it, it yeah and so especially on tv right <laughs> well they so we've they've tried to do improv on tv before so short form works better yeah like whose line is it anyway yeah. but even even that they you're not allowed to say whose line is it anyway on this show but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> they will they tape uh i don't know what the exact ratio is but they you know they tape hundreds of games hundreds of short form games and maybe 20 make it to right. air. So even then, yeah, you still even with short form, a lot of it doesn't make the cut. Um, because it just, and, and I bet it, they still got laughs in the studio, but it's because just not everything transfers well. Yeah. And we tried, they did a, an ASCAT show that you can um, find online and then there's an ASCAT DVD you can find. Oh, the one on Bravo? Yep. It's really good. But it didn't. Why is it, it's not still on the air? Because it doesn't. Tr it oh, is, was that? I thought it was just a one-time thing. Well, I think if 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 long form transferred to TV better, I think you would see there would still be a long form impression show on TV. I think because like the uh, <sighs> studios would love that because you don't have to pay writers. Like right. so, they would be able to make it for cheaper. Right. So if you could do it, they would do it. Um, and so and there's, also, there's another documentary called uh, about TJ and Dave. Like, yeah. trust us, this is all made up. Yeah, and but I love improv, and even even that, it's like I guarantee that show is better live than watching it yeah. on tape. Yeah. Anyway, so all all of that is to say, as I was screening this in front of other people, they gave me the feedback it was boring, and I'm like, no, I want to I want people to fall in love with improv, so I don't want them to walk away from this and have their first impression be that it's boring. So I I had less and less long form in it every yeah. time I showed them a cut 
So basically, what I at the end, what I tried to convey is like these people are really excited about this. Right. If you're interested, go see a long form show. Damn. In uh, in you know. I, New I York mean, or that's Chicago, what I, said, I said too off the air, like we're on the air. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's my radio kicking <laughs> in. Uh, I said to you before we started taping, um, I thought the movie was really good, but I'm also a nutcase for improv, right. and I knew some of the people in there, and now I'm happy for Riley, who the movie kind of was a little bit about some parts, yeah. how he wasn't on a Harold team, now he is, mm -hmm. and the same with uh, Sashir, mm -hmm. who kind of quit auditioning in the movie, right? Right. Like She's like, I'm not auditioning anymore, it was too hard, right. and now she's on the team. Right. So now I watch them and I'm like, yay! Yeah. I'm rooting for them. Right, and act and JD is on a Herald team now. Yes, and JD, Ali yeah. and uh, Trowbridge, who are also in the movie, are on Lloyd teams. I don't know who that is. Uh, John that? Trowbridge is on uh, Spooky Ghost, and then oh, Ali no. Kokesh. Mm. They're uh, sorry. They're I try to know everyone. Don't worry. It's I'm a trying. lot of people. I'm trying hard. Um, so yeah, so so what's gonna happen with it? Was it? So I just I submitted it to uh, the South by Southwest uh, Film Festival, big festival in Austin, Texas, and that's like a reach. I won't get in there because I just it's my first film. And it's very amateur, very do it yourself. Um, but and then I'm but submitting. It's like, it's like a, it's like an improviser making a movie about improv. Like it, I think it looks good being amateur, right? Because right. you're like. Well, it's improvising it. I'm hoping. Know? I'm hoping someone will appreciate that. And then I submitted it to a handful of smaller festivals too. So the hope is that at one of these festivals, I'll be able to, uh, like, meet a distributor and like maybe try to get it like See, on gotta, Netflix gotta, or something. Let like me. That. I gotta come in here. You gotta let me jump in and bring my puff daddy nisms. Do it. You gotta get the stars who come from improv to back you. You know what I'm saying? Like it. This. This community is like all these great people who love improv, who like, let's say, Tina Fey, who will come down to the theater and do an improv show, but mm -hmm. doesn't take improv somewhere else. Yeah. And it like it's all like Donald Glover, Tina Fey, Jack McBrayer. Uh, I think, isn't that TJ... In the Sonic commercials, yeah. <laughs> and the other guy too, right? Yeah, who's Peter? Dave Pasquazzi. No, he's not the guy in it though. Oh, who's in the, the other? Sonic uh, commercials. I think it's Peter Gross or Gross. Oh uh, yeah, the uh, is that his name? Yeah, is that is that a thing? I think Peter so. Yeah. Um, What's that at this part? Of? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, TJ from TJ and Dave is in the Sonic commercials. Uh -huh. Like, they need. There's like this. It's like a camaraderie, uh -huh. but it's like a secret camaraderie. Well, I, th I think that's partially intentional. I think they like that it's like the secret clubhouse they can go back to. Like they don't, if everybody knows about it, it kind of makes it less special, you know? Yeah. And even even at UCB, like the people who, uh, they talk about how it was like cooler and weirder 10 years ago. And yeah. some people like lament that it's as popular and well-known that it is now. Mm. Yeah. All right, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I just make. I just want to make. Th I want to share this art form. I do too. I do too. And there's like, a. Uh, oh my gosh! I'm gonna get this wrong. I w there's a. There's like a parable uh, about like a guru whispers to one of his young disciples like, "This is your mantra. Don't share it with anyone. This is the word that will lead you to enlightenment. But it only works if you don't share it with anyone." Okay. And then the little, like the little kid, like runs to the rooftop and shouts out his mantra to the whole town. And then the guru is like, "Well done, you learned the lesson." Because he like he shared the thing. So that's that's even what though he like, told him not even to. Even though he told him not to, but that's what, you know that's what was like he he made the right the, the generous choice to How share. How could it. you not share? Right. This? So that's anyway, good. I'm obsessed with improv. You should be too. Thank you for watching.